Chest compressions are indicated when the heart rate remains less than 60 beats per minute despite at least 30 seconds of PPV that opens the lungs, so we have seen chest movement. In most cases, you should have given ventilation through a properly inserted ET tube or laryngeal mask because the baby didn't improve ideally. Before chest compression, you have an alternative airway in place because that makes coordination much easier and uh, holding the seal with the mask when the baby is moving with the chest compression can be challenging. And you also free up one hand. Inaccurate assessment of heart rate can result in unnecessary cardiac compression, so having the cardiac monitor is uh, useful. Uh, you need to wipe the baby's chest and be prepared to stick it on. Of course, the pulse oximeter is a sense, uh, suitable measure as well. If the chest is not moving with PPV, the lungs have not been inflated and chest compressions are not yet indicated, so focus on achieving effective ventilation with Mr. Sopa steps. Keep repeating the steps, call for more help and more expertise if you can't manage. Once the ET tube or LMA is secure, move to the head end of the bed to give chest compression. So this provides space for safe insertion of the UVC. It's always important to anticipate the next step and move on from that. So you don't waste time. The <coughs> head end of the bed, you are also in a better position to result in less compressor fatigue. It's a two thumb method that's used. If the heart rate is less than 60, the pulse oximeter may not have a reliable signal. So Always debrief your team that you shouldn't enter the pulse oximeter readings in the resuscitation scenario unless you have spontaneous circulation. So it often fluctuates a lot, especially when chest compressions are used. So I've seen team members entering the heart rate as uh, 120 when actually it was the chest compression related heartbeat and uh, in inform them this is the reason we debrief in the end and also review the documentation. When chest compressions begin, ventilate using 100% oxygen because you cannot rely on the pulse oximeter signal for titrating the oxygen and also the baby is very sick and a brief exposure to 100% should not be harmful. You need a quickest response possible. Once the heart rate is above 60 and the pulse oximeter has a reliable signal, then you titrate downwards. You can titrate down fairly quickly if the saturation is maintained. So obviously we have the internipple line and one finger breath, the lower third of the sternum, avoiding the ziffy sternum and you have to go one third of the AP diameter of the chest which is roughly four centimeter. The baby should be on a flat surface and you can encircle to give the uh, firmness behind and the two thumb method is recommended in the NRP. The two finger method is still taught in the BLS but in terms of NRP the two finger uh, because you have usually more people in the labor room scenario. Use enough downward pressure to depress the sternum approximately one third of the AP diameter of the chest. So the rate is 90 compressions per minute and the breathing rate is 30 breaths, so 120 events per minute. This is a slower ventilation rate than used, which is 40 to 60 if you are just giving ventilation breaths. And you can use the cadence of 1 and 2 and 3 and breathe. When you say breathe, the person doing the breathing gives the breath. After 60 seconds of chest compression and ventilation, briefly stop and check the heart rate. Mostly you'll have the cardiac monitor attached so you can see the rhythm as well. Very rare to have a shockable rhythm in the newborn. Asystole is a commonest rhythm but you may have uh, electromechanical dissociation frequently in the resuscitation scenario. So you may have the ECG showing leads but the pulse may not reach the baby. So always uh, see the improvement in the baby's condition. When you do see the heart rate improving and you're giving IPPV but baby still remains pale, you have to consider electromechanical dissociation and continue chest compression, consider medication. You may also assess the baby's heart rate by listening with the stethoscope and you may need to briefly stop ventilation to auscultate the heart rate. If the heart rate is 60 breaths per minute or greater, discontinue compression, resume PPV at 40 to 60 breaths per minute and uh, when the pulse oximeter signal is achieved in a reliable way, you adjust the oxygen saturation uh, concentration to the saturation. If the heart rate remains less than 60, despite 60 seconds of effective ventilation, high quality coordinated chest compression, then epinephrine is administered and emergency vascular access is needed. So you may consider ET epinephrine for the first dose and then UVC uh, epinephrine for subsequent doses. Every three to five minutes you repeat it and also look at hypovolemia, hypotension, blood loss, pneumothorax and so on. So. In terms of coordinated compression and ventilation, three compressions to one ventilation, roughly every two seconds, so you have 120 events. 
and uh, 1 and 2 and breathe so 3 is to 1 rhythm if the heart rate is not improving with compression before you go for the medication you review the mnemonic cardio chest movement is the chest moving with each breath remember that the tube can get displaced and you need to apply the dope is the airway secured uh, are the three compressions coordinated with one ventilation is the depth of compression one third of the ap diameter is 100 percent oxygen being given so if this is being done then you go for medication